Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. You are about to listen to something I have never done before. Okay, this podcast is dedicated to all the ladies out there. So if you are a man, it will actually behoove you to listen because you are about to get the inside scoop and intel of some secret sauce women need to spark their sexy, which by the way, you will only benefit from. So yes, you can be a fly on the wall as we do some girl talk. But if you are a woman and you're listening to this, grab some wine and get into a comfortable position while I'm about to share with you some juicy secrets to what I call, ready? The five F's. Now, this is all about sparking your sexy. This isn't about the man. It's not about dating. This is about you and how you feel inside and out. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, it's not until you look in the mirror and you say, I got it going on and I'm sexy is when a man is going to find you sexy too. And as I'm talking, I want to let you know that this podcast is the first time I'm talking publicly about something I've been working on to help women feel that sexy confidence. This June, I decided to do my signature retreat in dun, 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 Vegas, <laughs> and it's just for women so that I can help you spark your sexy, which is the name of the retreat, by the way. So you're going to hear me reference that a lot during this episode. And I'm saying this now because I'm more than half full. And as I go through my 5F formula and you get inspired to work with me on this and you want to come with me to Vegas with a bunch of ladies in person and it's a community of women just like you, then mark your calendars for June 21st through the 23rd, depending on when you're listening to this. We're we're in 2024 right now, but I, I do these not too often, right? And that's why it's very special. And I wanted to just highlight that until, you know, we get into that episode more. And message me, you know, just if you are interested, go to askkimmy.com. That is askkimmy.com. If you already know you want in. All right. Anyway, I was recently inspired to pivot and focus on women for the retreat because uh, I've been having so many free breakthrough calls, which I often do, by the way, you're always welcome to hop on a call with me. That link is in the show notes. But as I've been doing these calls, Oh, so many women would tell me that they're just not feeling great, whether they're feeling frumpy or they they just haven't had the energy to date. Um, a lot of pe- people are just like in this negative state. And also, I'm just hearing you talk that you're wanting to find other women to do things with. And most of all, what has been really impressive is that no one is having fun. No one is having fun. Everybody has been in this kind of state. And I think we are in this interesting time right now because we have come out of a pandemic and everybody is wanting to get out. Yet, no one knows where to go to meet people. People are burned out from the online dating. But the fallout to a lot of this is that people have fallen into a cocoon Um People have shut down. And that really pulled at my heart because no one should be shut down, you know, just based on because they don't have a support system. And I have to say, another inspiration for all of this is seeing the impact of what the Golden Bachelor had on the tribe of women on there. You know, what was really interesting is that. In that show, and and for those of you who have seen me, um, I was on the Tamron Hall show with The Golden Bachelor, and I've been talking a lot about it on the news, is that it really wasn't about Gary himself. It wasn't about him and being selected. I mean, of course, there was some disappointment along the way, but really, it was about the tribe of women that formed. And I, I call it kind of the Golden Bachelorette effect because... 
it was just beautiful to watch these women benefit from regaining their mojo. You know, all these women were in their 60s and wanting to get back out there. But again, I think it took the show and all the goodies that went with it. I mean, let's face it, they got full makeovers. They had beautiful clothes that they could put on. They had all these activities that they were, you know, doing that really helped them get into their fun and silly. They were active. But most of all, they were forming a friendship with each other, which was different than all the other Bachelors shows that we've been seeing, especially with the younger crowd. Because, you know, as we age, it's something that we crave. We're looking for different things. And that connection is so important. So, you know, I I got really inspired to do these retreats and now just like dedicate a whole episode around this because I want to do the same for you ladies and for women all over the world. So you feel like you don't have to audition to be on a show to get that, right? Um, I want to share with you actually a a story that recently um, came out of my previous Spark Your Sexy retreat. You know, years ago, it was one of my first retreats and there was a woman who came to the retreat and she was just in that desperate state. She had tried other programs and she had done a bunch of therapy and nothing was working. And one of the things that really was profound about her is that she was this, you know, badass in business. She had lots of guy friends. In fact, you know, at, at work, most of her co-workers were men. So she had to relate to the men as men, like as a man almost. And so she carried a lot of masculine energy. She was very friendly. She could talk to people till the cows came home, but she didn't feel sexy and she didn't know how to crack the code on tapping into her feminine flair, if you will. And she didn't know what it was like she had tried to read a bunch of books and she like saw some videos on it and she understood that there is this thing called sex appeal. Um, But she had this notion that she thought she would have to like dumb down for a man or act as if she was somebody different and she didn't want to do that. So she uh, came to my program and thank God it was like an experiential thing for her because Had I worked with her virtually or on the phone, definitely we would have made headway, but it wasn't until I saw her in person and with the tribe of women and support around her, she had a huge breakthrough. I mean, we did makeovers and we did photo shoots and we did salsa dancing and then we practiced, you know, on men and did some flirt sessions and We had them going out in the world and do a scavenger hunt where they had to do some silly things with strangers, especially with men. And she broke down in the middle of the retreat and she was crying and saying, gosh, you know, all these years, I didn't realize what I had been missing. No one told me about my body language and the voice that she had was a little harsh. You know, it was just these nonverbal messages that she had no idea that was impacting, you know, her state of attraction with men. So she ended up joining my bigger program and, you know, we, we continued to work together and because she fell in this state of negativity, she had this scarcity mindset and she would often talk about how there are just no good men out there. Like she could not get one man to respond to her profile. Um, she didn't have like a date in years. And when she finally started owning this kind of new side to her, oh my gosh, I think I, as I say, I think I created a monster. She really started leaning into it and having fun. And she finally got her first date and she was celebrating that. And, um, and she started dating up a storm. And, you know, last time I had spoken with her, she told me that, she no longer had that scarcity mindset that she would say out loud every day in the mirror. There are an abundance of men everywhere. And because of the mindset and because she saw her sex appeal and owned her body, things started happening. And the reason why I'm bringing up this story, because literally this is like hot off the press three days ago, I got an email from her saying, Kimmy, I just want you to know 
that I'm dating a guy and it's going really well and we can't get enough of each other. And she's like, you know, I don't know what will be tomorrow, but I'm just happy for today. And, you know, and she thanked me. So, uh, you know, it gives me chills. And this is why I want to keep doing things like this and building community and building confidence because it's so important. And really what we're talking about is that it's not about the man, right? It's not about dating. This is about you. And when you feel sexy and confident, that is when a man will see you that way too. And guess what? Dating will be fun. And if you are in a relationship and you're listening to this, this is this is for you too. This is just as important because you have to still feel this way even when you're in a relationship. I always say you always have to date your partner. You always have to feel sexy. And, you know, relationships suffer when you're not feeling good. And we all know this. Again, we can't control other people, the man, that kind of thing. We can, But we can control how we do things and how we look at ourselves. And this is so important because of how you show up with yourself. It matters. It's hard to think about dating and putting yourself out there when you are feeling frumpy or have low energy or you're feeling lonely and unattractive. And I know what you're thinking that, you know, you're tired and you're sick of the dating game, or maybe you are just fearful of putting yourself out there, especially if it has been a while or you have been in a string of toxic and negative relationships. So you're probably saying to yourself, oh, I'm just going to work on me and I'd rather be alone than deal with more pain or the exhaustion of putting myself out there. But at what point do you use the phrase, oh, I'm just going to stay in and work on me as an excuse to not take action. I mean, let's face it. It's easier to go to therapy. And I say this with all due respect as a therapist. Okay. I just want to put a disclaimer on this. I believe therapy is super important, but hear me out. It is easier to go to the office and analyze things, right? And, and talk it through read books, listen to podcasts, and please listen, keep listening to mine. I'm not saying that. But it is easier to do that as a passenger, right, than to put on a red dress and talk to some men in a grocery store and go on a manhunt at a bar with some single girlfriends. I mean, let's just face it. It is easier. And the point is that your attitude that I'd rather be alone, and I'm saying that in air quotes, becomes a defense mechanism for putting yourself out there in fear of getting hurt, in fear of getting rejected, in fear of you know, being abandoned or whatever those fears are. And yes, it takes energy, it takes effort and confidence to take action, but that is the only way you will be able to change by taking action with things that might be and feel uncomfortable. I say this a lot, but I really want to drill that in. You know, you all know my red dress story by now. And if you don't, I, you can find that. Even go to my TEDx talk. I talk about it. But it's those moments that are so super uncomfortable that I want you to lean into. And that's really all the stuff that we're talking about today. So again, this is not about the man or dating. This is about you. And when you feel sexy and confident, that is when a man will see you that way too. And dating will be fun. I promise. All right. So let's get into these five F's as I call it. And I, I always joke that if you incorporate these five F's into your dating and relationships, they will lead to the sixth F and you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but most of all, you'll boost your confidence, feel more attractive and create more opportunities to find love. So here are the top five F tips to sexy confidence. All right. Number one is fashion. Yay. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, you know me, I always love starting on the outside but here's the thing about your style. It's all about being intentional with what I call a dating costume. And what I mean by that is putting together an outfit that is just dedicated to feel attractive when you're going out socially. I mean, it's almost like think about the vision of Wonder Woman, you know, putting on her costume and transforming into this powerful and sexy, badass woman. This is what I call 
the costume confidence that happens. When you wear something that makes you feel amazing, then you'll act that way as you go out into the world. Like we all know this when Halloween comes around. I mean, you see these like shy girls dressed up in these vixen cat suits or sexy nurse outfits, and suddenly they become like a completely different person. And this isn't superficial and or just, you know, kind of woo-woo stuff. Uh, actually, there are there's scientific proof that when you put on different clothes, it changes the, even the chemistry in your brain and your performance level. I mean, that's how like cool it is. That's why I'm such a big fan of it. And actually, in the upcoming retreat in June, I'm going to be having costumes for all you ladies. So just watch out. And if that scares you, that's why you have to even call me because <laughs> I'm all about being goofy and having fun. Uh, but even, and you know this too, your body language shifts and moves differently. Like there is no way to walk sexy in flip-flops. No way. But when you put on a pair of heels, you slow down and there's a little bounce in your step and that sends a different signal out to the men. So put on a dating costume that not only showcases your best assets, but also makes you feel empowered attractive. Choose outfits that highlight your best features and express your unique personality. So it could be a killer pair of heels, a flowy dress, a badass edgy leather jacket. Because when you look and feel your best, you radiate confidence and magnetism, and that makes you irresistible to others. So if you're listening to this and you're like, Kim, I cannot wear heels. I, there's no way that I am going to put on a dress that just isn't me. Or I live in a very cold climate. I There's no way I'm putting on a flowy dress. Well, I get that. There are like practicalities. And I'm not saying be something you're not. I am not about cookie cutter looks or approaches when it comes to your style. But also ask yourself, you know, what is the resistance there? You know, again, if you're in a cold climate, I get that. But usually when you're going on a date or a social event, you're going from the Uber to the event for an hour and then you leave. So, it, you know, there's a practicality to look at is that, you know, you can change into a costume for an hour. Anybody can do that. So if it seems hard for you, think of it that way. Um, I'll never forget this woman that I worked with she um, wasn't getting anywhere online or even offline for that matter. But what was really profound is she was so pretty. And I looked at all her pictures online and they were all like these frumpy outfits, you know, and dull colors. And the pictures were actually more of the setting behind her than of her. And she knew it. And she said, yeah, well, you know, she hides. She does. She didn't like getting attention or putting herself out there. So the very first thing I did with her was give her an exercise to, you know, we did a virtual makeover together and I suggested a few dresses and really powerful colors or strong colors that I wanted her to wear just practicing, going to the grocery store, going to just her hometown errands. And she was horrified. She's like, Kimmy, I cannot do that. And so I said, look, this is just an experiment. And I want you to just kind of feel into the impact it has, like notice who's noticing you, notice what's going on in your body, feel into your emotions around this. And so she she did it because obviously she she hired me to be her coach and she knew that that was an assignment. And it was really hard for her at first. And then something just clicked. You know, she really did started noticing a difference in the way people were treating her just overall but also getting more attention from men. And then we put those pictures online and a whole like pool of men who she's never seen before started reaching out to her. She started getting all this traction and she eventually met someone. And, you know, again, I always see this as a domino effect. It's not just putting on the costume, ladies, but it has to start somewhere. It has to start with you embodying something different when you look in the mirror, because again, this is about you. And if you know you're hiding in your clothes, this is a really powerful tool that you can do right away. All right. And 
all of you right now can do a little bit of an audit with your wardrobe. I mean, start looking in your closet and ask yourself some questions like what colors have people complimented you in? What makes you feel noticed and energetic? You can download my free style guide. Just go to KimmySeltzer.com forward slash style and you can see what body type you are and then read about what cuts flatter your figure, what cuts to stay away from. You know, what items do you need to get rid of? And then once you get rid of them, what do you need to get to update your wardrobe? And then, you know, go to your closet and pick out an outfit that is your go-to outfit when you have a date or a special event. Notice the elements about those clothes that makes you feel amazing and list it out. Is the feel of the fabric something that you're loving? Is it the color? Do you get compliments in it? I mean, these are all things that you can do right now. So with this F, the fashion, and I, I'm going to do something a little different today. This is kind of like what I do in my workshops. But as you're listening to this, feel into on a scale of one to 10, 10 being yeah, I got it going on. I don't need help in this area. One being like, oh my God, Kimmy, help. I'm coming to your your retreat. Um, what number is it? So start rating yourself in these, these Fs because that's going to help you determine what area you need to work on the most. Even if it's just coming out of this episode and you don't do anything else at all, at least have yourself get aware of what elements you need to work on when it comes to the sexy confidence. All right. The second F is flirt. Of course, I'm going to say flirt. This is, you know, I talk about this all the time. And you know, if you know me by now, that my motto is flirt and have fun with every run. <laughs> it's not just being target specific and turning it on to guys you're interested in or, you know, worrying about anything else. Remember, the definition of flirting in the dictionary is to act as if you are attracted to someone without the serious intentions of an outcome. But that last part is what trips most of you up, especially if you are a high achiever, you're analytical, you're outcome oriented. And by the way, that's what makes you brilliant in business to be outcome driven and goal oriented. But this goal oriented way of thinking is what kills you with dating and flirting because it's not about worrying about what is next, but rather what is and being in the moment. It's about a magnetism and playfulness that just draws people to you. You you need to think of flirting as a playful and lighthearted way to connect with others and spark chemistry. It's approaching interactions with a sense of curiosity and spontaneity and initiating playful banter or exchanging flirtatious glances. Like these are all indicators. And by showing genuine interest and enthusiasm in others, you create an inviting and engaging atmosphere and energy that encourages mutual attraction and connection. And, you know, I, most of the women that I work with, they have a very hard time just letting go and really like not thinking about what's next or they worry about being silly. I mean, the list goes on and on. And when I do my flirt workshops, I always ask what the excuses are and they're always the same every single workshop that I do. So it means that you're not alone. There's a lot of things that might trip you up, but if you practice on being just the kid on the playground and playing and not worrying about what, you know, the guys think or what the outcome will be, you'll create so much more opportunity. There was this woman who came to another retreat of mine who had a very hard time with flirting and she was so in her head and um, very analytical in the way she was thinking and very shy, a little more introverted. And yeah, the thought of flirting was just, I mean, super scary. And with the help of the ladies and the support of the group and learning the techniques of what flirting was all about at the retreat, she literally like in three days became the flirt queen of the group. Like no one could believe. <laughs> in fact, she would get up early before we would start our day and she would go like in town to get like coffee and just walk around. We were at the beach at the time and she would come back with stories every single time. She's like, I can't believe I talked to this guy at the, at the coffee shop and somebody just asked me, 
for my number. And someone just said to me how beautiful I was. And she's like, this has never happened to me before. And again, it wasn't changing who she was, but then she started marketing herself, right? She, she gave an energy off. I call it the charisma glow that suddenly men started noticing her, but also she started noticing men noticing her, right? Like it works both ways. All right. So rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst. What kind of flirt are you? Is this an area that you need to work on? Okay. Ready for the third F? It is femininity. Oof. This is, I mean, I could dedicate a whole podcast. Maybe I will on this word because it has a lot of people puzzled, especially nowadays. Um, it has different connotations, different definitions of what femininity really is. And I just want to highlight that it's not about dumbing down. A lot of women fear that that's what it is or that's what men want. It's about being someone you are not. It's not about that either. It's not about pretending to be helpless. <laughs> What it is, it's about cultivating a sense of openness and your ability to receive. If you are a woman who works in a position of power at work or you're constantly taking care of everyone else, you're independent and, you know, you do just fine on your own and you don't really need a man, but that's not the point, right? Like we know you can do it all. But being able to let go and receive might be extremely hard for you because you're so used to doing everything. So you might carry a lot of masculine energy, maybe by default, or maybe that's something you always had. Maybe that is something that you grew up with and that um, you always enjoyed that role. But it, you can see that in your body, right? Like maybe it's your fast paced actions, your body language. It could be your directness and your words. And even, even like small things where you try to take over or produce things with others, especially with men. And what happens is that then men feel like there's no room for them and that you don't need them. And so this kind of notion or attitude of, I don't need no man, becomes very apparent to them. But I'm sorry, I don't care how strong a woman you are. I've worked with celebrities and really powerful women all over the world. And when I ask this question of, would you like a guy to be able to at least take care of you sometimes? And again, it's not all the time. It's it's about, you know, that reciprocity. I said, wouldn't it be nice for you to not have to do it all? 99.9% of women say, oh, that sounds dreamy. I'd love that. But if you are not creating room to allow a man to do that, then you're going to keep having this dynamic of not having men give to you. And that can, that can look in a, a, I don't know, very different in different ways. It could be like you're attracting narcissists or you're attracting man children or you're attracting, um, you know, selfish guys or beta guys or whatever, like the dynamics end up happening like that because you're so strong. So exuding feminine energy, again, it's not about changing who you are at all. It just means that you need to slow down, start moving with grace, show a sense of warmth and openness in your interactions. It means allowing yourself to express your emotions with vulnerability and authenticity. Uh, the best story I have around this is another woman who who was part of my retreat program. And we had done some private coaching too before that. But I'll never forget when we were at a bar, we walked in. I might have told the story before, but this just highlights femininity. <laughs> um she had a she had a very independent life. Um, she was also a mom. She had a badass, you know, job where she was ahead of many, many people in the corporate setting. And it was extremely hard for her to just like let go. She was always used to being in control and producing everything and taking care of everything. So when we were at this bar, I <laughs> we walked in and I was trying to see like, you know, just how she would navigate the room, especially as we were working on flirting and, and, but with her, I really wanted to work on the femininity piece. She bolts to the the bar and 
she takes out her credit card and she's like, what do you want, Kimmy? And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, I'm getting us a drink. And I said, no, you're not. She's like, what do you mean? I said, you're not getting us a drink. A man is going to buy us a drink. And she's like, well, that never happens. I said, yeah, clearly. <laughs> and so I made her put the credit card back and we navigated the room and we ended up sitting in a bar and just like settling in and allowing space and time to just talk to some gentlemen and create some connection and fun. And literally within, I'd say, five to 10 minutes, we had men buying us drinks. And she looked at me and she's like, you planted these guys. How how the heck did you do this? I said, this is not me. I don't know that many people. It's about the energy that we're giving off. And we're slowing down. We're allowing that to happen and make that connection so that it's a pleasure for a man to do that for us. So she realized how much in her life that she wasn't allowing that space and time to receive. And it was a really powerful like moment for her. And things started really shifting after that. All right. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst, where do you fall in your femininity? And is this an area that you really need to work on? Okay. We're almost through the Fs. Uh, here's the fourth F, and that is fun. <laughs> I know this sounds very elementary, but oh my gosh, to me, this is the the most important F I think there is. Like, are you having fun on your dates or in your interactions with people around you, even as you go throughout your day? Or are you more serious in nature, slow to warm up? Conversations are dry, purposeful. Being playful and fun is the number one trait both men and women find attractive beyond success and intelligence even. That was research-based, by the way. It, it's fascinating because we don't talk about fun being such a like crucial element when it comes to attraction and dating. Like So many people are focused on authenticity and vulnerability and setting boundaries. And look, all of that's important. But if you ain't having fun, sister, then... Not a lot of, of action is going to happen because, you know, this is really important. Infusing your interactions with a sense of playfulness and spontaneity that ignites excitement and intrigue is like, I'd say, the number one thing that you all probably need to work on. Let your personality shine through with, you know, and this could be through witty banter, humorous anecdotes, and playful gestures that keep the conversation light and enjoyable. And at the end of the day, it's not about saying smart things back and forth, but it's about the fun feeling that someone has when they talk with you. And that is so attractive and inviting. When you're radiating that positivity and joy, you create an irresistible aura that just attracts others to you. It's like bees to honey. It's getting out of your head and being more in your body. It's smiling more. And having expressive body language where you are seen as charismatic. You know, it's just, I always equate this to, to kids. You know, a long time ago when you were a child or maybe kids that you've had or you've seen on the playground, when you watch them, they are they don't have filters, right? They're just having fun. They don't hesitate. They might go up to each other and say, hi, want to play? What are you doing? Can I borrow your shovel? Like, they don't think about, oh, I better not bother that kid. He looks busy. Or, oh, what do I say when I go up to them? Like they just, they just are playful and fun and, and they are in that moment. And really, to me, that's what flirtation is too. But the playfulness that goes with it is is so inviting and it's beautiful to watch. So I, I encourage all of you to just go to a playground and watch kids. And see if you can get down and dirty with them and start playing with them. That's a great way of tapping into your inner child. Um, there's a woman at another retreat of mine. Actually, this was the last one that I had in Miami. And she was in her late 60s and very serious. I mean, and she, I think she was a CPA and, oh, my God, very analytical, very dry. Um, she was analyzing every single thing, thinking about so much before she would say something and ve was very serious, just extremely serious. And 
you know, we had a goal with her because we all kind of state goals in the beginning of the retreat about what they're going to work on. And we all wanted her to be more silly, be more playful. And so uh, it was time to do the scavenger hunt. And I made the ladies wear ear like these like cat ears and put on lipstick and she was fighting me to the nail she said I'm not going out looking like this and I like no oh, you have to you're here <laughs> and so and, and again with all love and everybody there was really encouraging her and so she went out to the scavenger hunt looking like that and being more playful and she came back laughing she had this like glow oh my god she just looked so beautiful because of this this playfulness energy that she had with her. And she's like, Kimmy, that was the most fun I've had in years. And I, to my surprise, it was amazing how people responded to me so positively. And it really helped her unlock some of these like blocks that she was having. And, you know, she went back home and she's like, you know, I'm going to put these ears on as a reminder and just, you know, start wearing them on a weekly basis just so that she got comfortable being in her play. And you all can do that too. All right. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst, where are you when it comes to fun? Is this something you need to work on? All right. The last F is friendship. Oh, Big one. Yeah. Cultivating a supportive network of wing gals who have your back to go out with is so important. I can't tell you how many people I talk to will say, I don't have a group of friends that we can laugh and go out with who truly get me. It's hard to put yourself out there without other women who will lift you up and really understand your life as it is currently. I mean, we as women are social beings, even more so than men, and we need each other. It's harder later in life because everyone gets busy and has different lives and even friendships change as you change. So it's so important to surround yourself with friends who lift you up and encourage you and who are willing to provide even honest feedback and support as you're going through this journey. And by having a strong support system, you combat feelings of loneliness and insecurity. You gain valuable practice and confidence especially when it comes to navigating the dating scene. And this is why most of my programs are community-based because we need each other now more than ever. We're becoming so fragmented, even as a society. Um, what's so beautiful about like all these retreat programs that I've been doing, everyone gets in a WhatsApp channel. And you know, I never shut down the channel after the retreats are are over. And just most recently, I, I have to share, it's it's so cool because I'm still on the WhatsApp channel and I see everyone still like giving each other support and asking each other for advice and they can't get enough of each other. Like one group, they went on a trip without me and I loved it. <laughs> I'm like, I was like a proud mama that they are still bonding. Um, most recently with the Eclipse, a, another group of mine, they got together and watched the Eclipse together and had dinner and... I mean, this this is the stuff that matters, right? Like we all need that connection and the loneliness is real. It is an epidemic right now. So I'm determined to keep going with that sense of community. All right, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, yeah, I got so many friends I don't know what to do with. One being like, oh my God, I would love to have some other ladies just like me that can really support me and, and go out with. Where do you fall? All right. Those are the five F's. So we have flirting, we have fashion, we have femininity, fun, and finally friendship. And really kind of do a self-assessment of these five areas of your life and determine, do you need some help in this area? Because again, it's hard to go out there and date if you're not taking care of this part of your life for yourself. I want to do a little something different. I usually read, um, a letter asking, you know, for advice from me, but this letter that I received, um, actually a few months back, I think really highlights the importance of sparking your own sexy. It's a woman who had first gotten in touch with me after she saw me at a workshop. And, you know, when we first hopped on a call together, the thing that she wrote and that she was struggling with is that she said that her dating goals were that 
she wanted to be able to attract a man who would light her up in her heart and her mind and her body. And then she wanted to have a relationship with that person. And she said that she had been on plenty of first and second dates, even sometimes third, but it had been years since she had anything close to a relationship with someone. And then she wrote this. I know it's me. I've struggled in the past with being my authentic self with men I'm interested in. I'm getting better at it, I think, but I'm still missing something. I know I need to learn how to be more feminine. I've been single for so long and my independence probably isn't very attractive to men. I seem to attract men who like me for my empathy. And so I get treated more like a therapist than a partner. I have also compromised my standards for far too long. It's within a few dates that I know if we're compatible or not. I'm getting clear with men about what I'm looking for and expressing my needs. Well, so that's where you know, she wanted some help and, and she ended up signing up for my retreat program to increase her sexy confidence, work on her feminine flair, and also forming friendships with other singles to really, you know, help her see her value beyond what she could do for men. She was the quintessential like helper doer. And she really needed to own who she is without guilt and allow men and others to give back to her. And so through the program, she learned to set boundaries left and right. Like we really worked hard on that. And she dressed with sex appeal. She really like got comfortable in her own skin, in her body with like that sex appeal. She started dating up a storm as queen bee, as I call it, just to see who would be right for her this time without shape-shifting into what men wanted of her. And her hard work paid off because she is now dating an amazing man. And here is a note I got from her months later. She said, I'm dating an amazing guy right now, just taking it one day at a time. But so far, it's really great. Anyway, I just wanted to share something that hit me during our last date that we had. And it has to do with the work I did with you and your program. Last night, I decided to dress up Even though no occasion and nothing fancy we were doing, I wore my Millie dress, my leather jacket, some fishnets because I like them and I feel sexy in them and heels. Well, my guy definitely noticed and could not keep his eyes or hands off of me. He said he loved how comfortable I am in my skin and that I can dress up anytime. He complimented me on the way I carry myself. Oh, it was so nice to not care that I was overdressed in this town, something that always kept me from dressing the way I want. I attribute this new level of confidence to the time I spent with you, Kimmy, working on myself and with the others in the group. It feels so good to be myself and be noticed and appreciated and not worry about, quote unquote, fitting in. I know you all can appreciate these strides because you've been through them, too. And that was a note to the group as well. Ah, I get chills every time I just, I get emails and hear about people's successes and you too deserve to own what you are listening to this and walk into the world with confidence, fun, and ease. And if you visualize that walking into a room, owning it, but you don't know how you could ever do that, then definitely consider coming to my Spark Your Sexy retreat in June. And I promise I promise you'll get there in a very short amount of time because it's intense. You know, it really will accelerate things by doing everything in person because you can't learn this stuff in a book. You really can't. You you have to experience it and embody it. And I always joke, you can't learn how to be in your body in a cerebral way. (laughs) But this is not about the man, ladies. It's not about dating. This is about you. I hope you really got that. And when you feel sexy and confident, that is when a man will see you that way too. And dating will be more fun. I promise. All right. That was a little bit longer today and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you are feeling frumpy and not very sexy in your dating life, you have a hard time getting out there and you cannot make the retreat in June, I have also something for you that might jumpstart things and get you feeling more confident in this area of your life. Now, There's something that I always try to, you know, 
hone in on with first impressions is that it only takes seven seconds now. Like years ago, it was 30 seconds. Now it's only seven seconds. I think it's kind of quicker than that, but let's just say that that's what research says. And that first impression can determine how potential dates see you and treat you. And if you were an introvert, you're a little slow to warm up. That gap from the time that somebody sees you to, to getting to know you sometimes makes you miss opportunities for moving on. And that's why I want to help you look and feel your best so you can attract what you want both in your dating life and just in life in general. So my next interactive co-ed workshop, I'm excited, is April 23rd. It's called The First Impression Makeover, which is about creating your own confidence style and mastering body language for your dating success. And you'll learn to feel confident in your skin and market yourself attractively and attract dream partners in a fun-filled experience. It's so much fun, especially because it's co-ed and we really get to experience each other. So if you're interested in that or if you want to at least start there, go to StopHatingDating.com. That's StopHatingDating.com to register as spots do go fast. And this is a great way to start taking action in this area of your life and become the confident and stylish person you you know that you can be. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now. <laughs>